Hello, calculus fans. So up until this point, we've been writing the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and we've only been doing that when a is less than b. But it's possible to reverse the upper and the lower limits. If that happens, then delta x equals a minus b over n, which is the negative of b minus a over n. So from that, let's see what we get. So what happens is, if we reverse the limits of integration, then that introduces a minus sign. So it's not necessary for the lower limit to be smaller than the upper limit. Also, if the lower and upper limits are the same, then we just end up getting zero when we evaluate the limit. There's a lot of other properties of definite integrals. Now let's look at some of these. They all have analogs to limit and derivative properties. If we just integrate c from a to b, then we just get c times b minus a. You can think of this as just representing the area of a rectangle. Here's another one. If we integrate a sum, then we can just add up the two integrals separately, just like with limits and derivatives. Naturally, you can do the same thing with subtracting. And finally, if there's a constant on the inside of the integral, a multiplicative constant, that can be brought out front, just like with limits and with derivatives. Okay, that's all for now.